one point we we're like very good friends with Ryan and I don't recognize this person. Yeah, me I, either. That's not the Ryan I know. Yeah, it just sounds like you're a little upset that he exposed the fact that you're in the Illuminati. That's true, by the way. <laughs> I think the baby will probably come out fondling and caring for Nina. And then to me, I'm just kind of like a stranger, to be honest with you. The baby's gonna be like, I don't know you, dude. Who do you think's gonna be the grand godfather? KSI. You're making KSI the godfather? Uh, okay. Did you say that with your brother right next to you? Yo, is this real? It says uh, we're doing 1,000x multipliers on better picks. That can't be real. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's real, bro. Someone just won 20K off a $20 lineup on the NBA. God damn. Are you serious? <laughs> Wait, this is kind of bad. Who, who, who greenlit this at the company? People can win 1,000 times their money. Did you know about this? Hell no, but I'm about to make me a lineup. <laughs> What? We're, we're going to fucking a lose thousand? all of our money. All right. Well, uh, this was supposed to be an ad read, but I guess, fuck it. We're doing 1,000x lineups now. Oh, I'm about to Go fire. play better oh. picks and win 1,000 times your money, which will be out of my pocket. Fuck. I apologize to the audience because our audio guy, Gus, is a lumberjack. <laughs> Primarily a lumberjack, secondary audio guy. He's a so yeah so so that if you hear muddled fuckery all the time, it's it's because that, but also little pump is is a little little so mute. and so him and Jasper, who's also a little uh, don't know how to like speak into a microphone. They We're, start get. I like to call it soft spoken. Who is name? that? What's up, guys? How did you get here so fast? I was I was sitting outside. I, I was waiting at the gym for you guys. I was looking around yeah. on the phone. I realized oh, I think I'm in the man, wrong you're spot. A fucking idiot. That's, well, uh, I just no. think that's a simple error. I think it was a miscommunication. Right. A miscommunication. Uh, well, that's crazy. I lint rolled my jeans, and somehow I'm still covered in dirt. We do not care. Why were you in Bro, dirt? Why are you guys coming at me? Because so they said this episode is whites versus blacks. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said. It's like a it's a race war today. <laughs> so Brandon's on our team. Well, I, was, <laughs> I, should, I, I, should be, I should be directly in the middle. <laughs> One and a half blacks. <laughs> I was gonna say, where, where does that put Brandon? <laughs> Damn, Brandon, bro. you should tell the audience that you are black. Listen, Man. brother, it's a it's a lost cause at this point. It doesn't matter what I say. I don't look the part, so it's uh. Brandon Brandon is half black. His dad um, has 30 kids and True. is literally 30. How many, how many half siblings you got? I, I just found out 29. About 30, <laughs> 35 right. of them. Give me an actual number. No, I swear, I swear to God. Bro, you don't have 35 half siblings. Okay, let me tell you the story. So I don't know my biological father, never knew him. Uh, found online two brothers that I had that were half brothers. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I have two half brothers that I never knew about. So I found their names. I had their Instagrams. I didn't reach out to them for a while. I was a little bit nervous about it. Then I finally, one day I was like, fuck it. Actually, a lot of it happened at your house in Kevin's room. I went to get on my first phone call with my first brother. We were there for, I think, the Ryan and Tank fight. Weird spot to do that. Yep. Well, it just, it just came up <laughs> and we got on a phone call. He was like, you should talk to the other brother. He'll have more information for you. So the next day I called the older brother. We're talking. Everything's going great. And he's like, you know, I should probably tell you this isn't the first time I got a call like this. I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh my mean? God. He goes, so there's 30 brothers that we know of. <laughs> All boys. He Yo. goes, he goes, if you know oh. Joe Mixon from yeah, the, what, the Bengals? The Bengals. He's related to the Bengals like running back. Cousin. And then his other brothers are like MMA fighter and like Yo. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. What has your dad been up to? He's a fucking, fucking hamster. A lot. He's just fucking. Yo, for real. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna make a documentary one day and like find everyone. Bro, I don't want to dog on your dad because respect because he's your father. But is his strategy just like knock a bitch up and get out of there? That's what it seemed to be. And and then his secondary strategy was trying to knock himself up because then I found out that um, this is going to get a little dark. You guys can't get offended because it's you my have to dad. say You have to say unalived himself. Yeah, yeah. He tried to he, – well, he ended up in prison. And then he tried to unalive himself from like the third story. From like the third story. Should have jumped from the fourth. And he should have gone from the fourth. <laughs> and it didn't. He didn't. He didn't get the job done. Fa failed, failed, uh, unalive. So now he's got, he's like, why, this is fucked up. Why am I, I'm like worried that somebody else is going to get offended about me talking about my own dad's. And it's like, 
unaliving. Yeah. Un- un- yeah, un- yeah, yeah. No, you. It, it probably just feels weird to like talk about it, but yeah. But yeah, I understood. Well, welcome back to BS with Jake Paul, <laughs> where we <laughs> bullshit about everything. Uh, make sure you yes. guys subscribe. Give us a big thumbs up. If we get uh, 10,000 likes, uh, Logan is uh, going to reveal the, the gender of his baby. 100%. And so we have a lot of stuff to get into on this episode. Um, we have Bo Nickel joining us in a second. We're going to talk about WrestleMania. Uh, UFC 300, Bro, all the beef the, going on with Mazda. The fact that you have this is insane. Haney who, versus. Who prepares this? Uh, I'm not even sure, to be honest. Does Why anyone is everyone know? shaking their head? There's three pages with detailed notes. Someone has to know who made this. We're going to get into Haney versus Garcia, the Drake beef and stuff going on. Ronda Rousey. I have to respond to Jorge Mazda. Um, <laughs> dude, do you have a, do you have a cough? I do. Uh, yeah. What do you like? Have? Currently, or yeah, I was sick at WrestleMania. I was sick. I got sick on the day. I didn't sneeze three times, but I was sick. That's crazy. It's, bro- it's part of the reason I quit boxing. It's because you get sick all the time. I just can't trust I won't be sick on the day. That's crazy, it's, bro. It's the worst feeling ever. You My disgust me, sucks. Nick. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> quit coughing all over the mics. Hey, why and did shit. you show up with do a cold? Do we have like a bad? Purell or, so, or something Leave to spray him down. I don't. don't you gonna put Purell on the mic? So, <laughs> what do you think about Ronda Rousey saying that you're getting special treatment and basically being like pampered and such by the WWE and getting extra time to train? Uh, okay. Um, you know, I want to. I want to. I want to approach this from a real mature standpoint because I like Ronda Rousey. What she's done in MMA is incredible. Like, we watched her growing up just yep. snapping arms. Yep. I have a lot of respect for Ronda Rousey. Every time I've met her, it was been, it's been very amicable. And so when she's saying that, I don't think it's like a personal attack on me by any means. I don't feel she's coming after me. I feel she's maybe using me as an example to express her dissatisfaction with maybe how she was um, treated yeah. in the WWE. But I can't speak on that because I don't know how she was treated. Wait, do you think she could whoop my ass? 100%. Yeah. yeah. In one fucking second. Yeah. Actually? 100%. Yeah, so you better man, pipe I down. I with Ronda Rousey, man. That's my, <laughs> that's my dog. Not, not because, because I, I don't think she's a hater. I think no. she might be unhappy with how her run in the WWE went, but I don't know anything really about that. All I know is, right, how I work and the um, facilities and time that I've been given to make my matches as best as possible – because I think the WWE recognizes that when I put on a good match, which will happen every single time I perform, the outcome and the reaction of the fans is immense. It, 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 it fills the audience. And I've, I think I've proven my value both in and out the ring, on the mic, wrestling. Like, like bro, the impressions that I'm delivering the company are second to none. Yeah, th- from my point of view just watching you wrestle it's like there's not there's no skill differentiation to any of the people it's like you, from what i see is that you could do all of the things and in in this short amount of time that you've been doing it and even more impressive things than others and making things look more natural like when you jump and flip you're like floating for a second which i think is pretty sick but do you do you get extra time like it's from what at my point of view it's like you spend like couple of days before yeah no it's 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 never more than at this point maybe four days yeah um when i first started for sure they were holding my hand bro i didn't i didn't go to the pc and do professional wrestling training like a lot of my peers my only practice and time to learn how to be a professional wrestler was when we were building the match now you know i'm working with guys who don't always feel like like spending that much time on it and although it might be helpful for me, I want to be a good colleague. Um, but like, yeah, bro, I wrestled a I wrestled a SmackDown once, um, where it, it was it was my first uh, television match, and I learned it in a week. You know, we took we took a collective four hours to do it. Like, I can do it, um, obviously, and I'm going to do it. But my ability to learn matches, build them, put them together, understand them, and then execute them is getting better. So the time that I need is getting shorter. But I think WWE recognizes that their investment in making sure I do have the time 
to put the best matches on is paying off. Did you see my fake out? So as you guys saw, my brother broke the news of him having a baby. So what better time for me to make my own announcement? Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, the rematch as the co-main event of me versus Mike Tyson, July 20th, Dallas, Texas. I loved your fake out. <laughs> I, I, was, I was so excited to hear that Amanda Serrano is fighting Katie Taylor on your Mike Tyson card. Dude, that's insane. I can't believe it. That's insane. But I can believe it because I've been waiting so long for Amanda to get her revenge and avenge that loss that, in my opinion, allegedly wasn't, <laughs> wasn't a loss by any means. But, sore subject. But now she has the chance July 20th and the event just got bigger. That's a headline fight, not just a headline fight, an amazing headline fight between two badass females. And the fact that that's a co-main event on what's already going to be an amazing card, I was very happy to see that announcement this morning. It's going to be absurd, and still to this day, that fight is probably the best fight I've ever seen so in good. my life. So good. Yo, when you see Mike Tyson hitting them pads, you get a little nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Bro was yeah. running at lightning speed today. Yeah, it, but it's also like, <laughs> yeah, he was sprinting, dog. He fast, but it's motivating, I think, and I think it's good to carry fear into the ring and with you on a daily basis when you're training because it makes you better. And so, um, it excites me that I have my toughest and craziest and most powerful opponent to date, and. The challenge of going up to heavyweight is kind of like fun. That That is a benefit because I've been eating a lot of pasta. You love pasta. Yeah, I love pasta. So that's that's a good thing. But he definitely is looking like a fucking animal. I will say people are underestimating me, though, because when I go to his comments, and of course, because people want to do anything they can to discredit me, I mean, that's just the name of the game and what's happened. But they're just saying, like, if Mike loses, then fighting is rigged. And that's basically, like, every comment because they see how good he looks on the mitts. But Mike, looking good on the mitts is not even half the battle. You have to face me in the ring. And every— He knows that. Every—, every yeah, <laughs> Why but, are you talking but, shit? He knows but, all that. <laughs> but, but, but I think he might be, like— seeing these videos of how good he looks hitting the mitts and like getting like turned up and his confidence is probably growing because he sees everyone being like he's gonna fucking kill jake but see he's gonna step in there like i'm mike tyson i'm the greatest ever like and not even think about anything that you've done at all like or any like your work ethic at all he's not thinking about that he's just thinking i'm mike tyson i think he is i think he fully understands who and what he's getting into the ring with in Jake Paul. I think when you have fought everyone else, there's a moment I can see it watching from the sides where they all go, holy shit, this YouTuber hits much harder than I thought he did. And you can see it change in their eyes. I'm not sure Mike will have that moment. I think Mike, contrary to your belief, is not underestimating you. He's probably preparing for a young, hungry dog who refuses to lose. And that's what you are right now. Yeah. No, I, I don't I don't maybe know if Mike is underestimating me or not. I would I would don't think he is necessarily. I think the rest of the world is. That's true. Like just based off of the comments and like literally hundred thousand comment posts where it's like Jake is getting fucking cremated if he loses if People Mike tell loses me in it's person. rigged. People yeah. tell me in person. Yeah. I have to go back. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? My brother's gonna kick his ass. Yeah, people people come up to me and like kind of ease into the conversation like oh like ha have you seen those like mid videos he's, he's looking pretty yeah. good i don't know he's looking hood, pretty the hood good still believes in you though my dad said he think you got it sick it's valid what's your dad no. say brandon so we got oh, that's crazy See, that's fucking that outrageous that that that's so yeah there's like so there's like what like there's one two vegetable. three all right which makes it even worse I didn't know that. Veggie too. I didn't know that. <laughs> He's like half veg. He's like half grilled. <laughs> half Fuck grilled him. veggie, bro. Oh, yeah. Veggie tails. Well, at least there's like 30 or 40 people that believe I'm going to win. Yeah, there's also like 30 or 40 people. And Jasper's that, dad. Let's yeah. go. There's, there's also like 30 or 40 people that thought the fight was not going to happen because they thought you were injured. Did you see the, the viral Bro, video? people are so <laughs> dumb. Like, it, it's, it's sad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time to talk money. Jasper, do you want to make some money? Oh yeah, I want to make well, some money. 
I have something for you, and it's called Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Yes, I'm talking to you. From the launch your shop online stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to, did we just hit a million dollar stage? Shopify's there to help you grow. Me? Yes. Jasper is 5'7". So shop, no. <laughs> Whether you're selling scented soaps or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, which is very easy to use, by the way. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36%. Second to none. Better on average compared to the other leading commerce platforms, which you don't want in the first place, and sell more with less effort and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI powered all star. So yes, AI is now built into the system. Alan Iverson is built into Shopify? A AI? Not not Alan Iverson, no. Oh. Okay. Shopify powers ten percent of all e commerce in the US, that is a fact. And Shopify is the global force behind all birds, Rothies and Brooke Linen and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across one hundred and seventy five countries. Plus, yeah. Shopify's award winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. What's can that, can you do the cha ching? Cha ching. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash BS, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash BS now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash BS. What Shopify make you want to say? Cha ching But yeah, so we kind of we kind of got uh, sidetracked as, as normal, but I do want to kind of go back on, on you being a, a father and and uh, ask you a question. Is there a gender that you're hoping for? There's a gender I'm hoping for? Like, man, bro, come on, bro. What are, we, what, are, what are we saying here? You want a boy? Come on, what are we talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, you, you want, you want, to, be, like, you want I, to be a coach. I, I love the idea of having, first off, multiple children, but a older brother to potentially protect yeah that's very and true oversee yeah, a, that's a very younger true. sister that's like know. the classic lineup everybody wants that yeah that come, like you know i don't i don't even need to say it but like also i i've 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 the idea of having a daughter is also just so exciting because dude like the, the the love that i'll have for this little nina me i can't i can't imagine right like here's the conclusion i think i've reached Although I want a boy first, and I eventually would want a daughter as well, I I I, I don't care. I think I think both will yield amazing things, and like I'm cool with either. I'll be so excited either way. What do, we should we should do a little vote around. What do you what do you guys think he's gonna have? I, I think you're gonna have a girl. Yeah, convince it's a girl. I, I think agree. so too. Convince it's a girl. It is a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy girl. that we I, all think that. I'll, I'll probably have all, all girls. girls. You to what do you think? Thinks you to thinks boy. boy. Well. Regardless, um, who do you think is going to be the grand godfather? KSI. Sorry. You're making KSI the godfather? Bro. Is that we what heard, you just said? We, we heard I didn't even the just, I didn't even just. Did you say that with your brother right next to you? We, uh, read, we read it on the bread bat. So it, <laughs> yeah, we heard it on the bread bat. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you something. Or let me say something. Uh, if we do, when we do, choose a godfather... I'm going to make more of a thing out of it than just like saying it on a podcast. Okay. Welcome to the night shift. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you're clocking in and I am. <laughs> is it that big of a thing like to announce who the Godfather is? Is it? Is it a big thing? My godmom was a crackhead. So it's going to be like, like you're going to do like one of those sky painting things where it's just like K-S-I. Like I mean, I guess it's not a big deal. Like obviously Jake's the fucking Godfather, the right? <laughs> Then, yeah, obviously, I'm the godfather. <laughs> I'm doing it all alone. Wait, He's you, obviously the godfather, but I was going to do a thing out of it. Uh, you, can, you, you, can you, can you can trust me. You can be a godfather me. and an uncle. Jake as well. But I have to ask him, like, in a professional <laughs> yeah. way. Like, I forgot that just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he has to say yeah, yes to both. What if he doesn't want to be my best man or my godfather? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll say yes. Just it, like, hypothetically speaking, if you were to, yeah. So just so. By the way, we're just toying with those ideas. Yeah, we're. So that, it could. I still have to earn it. Nothing's official. I have an earn out clause. But I prefer to, you know, say that moment comes around, say it in a more meaningful way than just, you know, a couple of dudes sitting on a couch. How you? How are you feeling about about opening the biggest chapter of your life, being going into fatherhood right now? I just feel ready. I just feel ready. You know. Um, I, I, the only the only thing I can say I, I said this on impulsive is like I'm shocked now that I'm experiencing it how easy pregnancy is for guys and how not easy it is for women. What did you think it was going to be like? I just didn't know how unfair this shit. And- bro, this it sucks. Holy shit. Yeah. It is a walk She's, in the park for the guy. Bro, I ain't doing shit. I ain't doing shit. Meanwhile, Nina has headaches. She doesn't feel good. She's getting she's gaining weight. She's hungry. Random cravings. Not sleeping well sometimes. Like, it, that shit sucks. I feel like this is like general knowledge about pregnancy. But bro, 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 until you're in it and you're like, yo, this shit really ain't fair. Like, you don't, you don't get yeah, it. Yeah, and then you got like six more months to go. <laughs> That's For her, crazy. I'm fine. Yeah. I, and, 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 and mind you, we want to have multiple kids. So, so she's like, I'm just going to be a... A baby machine for the next three years that's like how is that fair but what if i want to drink you know what the cool trade-off of that is is the bond that the mother and kid have because of that it's like when you go through a really 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 intense something with a group of brothers say like say you do like a really intense workout or like a fucking what do we do the, the sweat lodge yeah. it's like the, you have this connection through suffering and i think that's what happens with the mother yes they go through a lot more but then they also get this really special bond with the child for a lifetime i did mention to her that i think the baby will probably come out fondling and caring for Nina, right? It's, she's been inside Nina for nine months. And then to me, I'm just kind of like a stranger, to be honest with you. The baby's going to be like, I don't fucking know you, dude. Who are you, weird guy? Yeah. Weird guy, you wear costumes every other month to go wrestle? Like, fucking weirdo. Like, Did you... S- skin to skin. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll do all of it. Did you, did you say that you're also not drinking with her? Like you're doing the sobriety with her? <laughs> Okay, say less. <laughs> say less. I told. I definitely told her I would, bro. I really fucked up here. I really. Fu- I'll be honest. I fucked up here, dude. Yeah. I told her before she was pregnant. I was like, you know, whenever you go through that, I'll stand with you in solidarity, brother. Sober brothers. Did you say that when you were drunk? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you something. Now that we're here. Yeah, you could live vicariously through. Oh, you. Oh, you don't drink. Oh, easy for you. What? You're just saying that she would let me drink a little bit. Yeah. You obviously wouldn't drink. No, Nina likes a drink. She likes a cocktail, you know, and now she can't have that. Meanwhile, I've made no sacrifices. Well, she can. No, she shouldn't. Yeah, that motherfucker just going to come out like me. She can. Uh, Haney vers- versus Garcia preview. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Going to the side of the Guys, we need to pivot. Haney. Versus Ryan Garcia this weekend. Mm. A couple of things to get into here. But first and foremost, Logan, what do you think is going on with this uh, guy, Ryan Garcia? Myth. <sighs> what do I think is going on with Ryan? Um, I think... Ryan in the past has been vocal about his mental health problems. And I think those problems have manifested in a really interesting way in the buildup to this fight that appears to be a manic episode where he is willing to say and do anything to get attention, as you know and as I know. I don't think this is a manic episode. It's more like a manic movie. Like, yeah, it like won't. A, it's not stopping. A trilogy. <laughs> yeah, like an episode is pretty short and sweet. This has been tweaking for like uh, well, that's six why, months. Yeah, well, that's why I'm concerned because, like, I know Ryan. You know Ryan. Yeah, bro. Like at one point, we we're like very good friends with Ryan, and I don't recognize this person. Yeah, me I, either. That's not the Ryan I know. He's like eyes are different too. Dude, it's it's things are different in the way he's acting and, and being and attention. they say he got cloned <laughs> they say he got, oh, no bro, if they, they show his left hook from like a year ago hitting the bag yeah it's different <laughs> it's real i'm just to saying lower his hand to pretend but, pretend but protect that gut <laughs> <laughs> <Punch> <laughs> the hole but yeah 
No, yeah, I, I, I hope he's okay. Like, I don't know. I just feel like the problem is, is that everyone around him is like hyping that behavior up and not shooting straight with him. Everyone around like, him Yo, needs chill. him. Because like, there's, there's a tension and selling a fight and then there's just like bad attention and hurting your brand. Well, well, because it's not strategic. He, I don't think he understands anything more than like, oh, People are reacting to what I'm saying. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not yeah. like uh, what if, is what I'm saying damaging? Is what I'm, to my brand, to the world? It, like he doesn't care. He's just he's just saying outrageous stuff to get a reaction. Right. And it just sounds like you're. A drug. Yeah. It just sounds like you're a little upset that he exposed the fact that you're in the Illuminati. So oh yeah. Like oh, Fuck. bro, you gotta go. Shit. Yeah, he Shit. said you're an evil force. What did he say? He he hit me. He was like, Jasper, are you working with the enemies? Actually, oh, no. no. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god! He said it on live. That's no. wild. He was like, Jasper, you better not be working with the fucking enemies. Oh no! That's I, wild. I will say this, and and I think your boy, um, Wade. One sec, sorry. Shut up. I was Wade. I was queuing up his song. Oh. Because Ryan has a song. I want to play it for you guys. Okay. So, what Ryan. were you saying, Wade? I think your boy Wade said something to Ryan on his spaces once, but like. Saying all the crazy shit that Ryan is doing and putting himself on this pedestal of like doing right by inhumane crimes and then using the veil of religion yeah. as the reason why he's doing it is so fucked up, dude. Yeah. That's like, that's it, yeah. it, it, like everything at the end of the day, he can say whatever he wants and then he'll bring it back, back to Christ. Yeah. And now you're protected by that yeah, veil. But, but like, then that's just void because. Yesterday, he went on a posting spree, probably 30 posts about how he has bitches and he was posting his DMs with. But it's not void. It's not void to people who Christianity really means something to. That's the issue. That's the issue. Like Ryan is. And I, 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 and I don't know what Ryan like really believes or doesn't believe. But the fact that people devote their lives to this religion and he at bare minimum is using it as a, a shield for these crazy things he's saying is fucked up. No matter how you cut it, that's objectively what, what, fucked what's, up. What's crazy things are you talking about? I'm specifically talking about... I'm saying that you're in, in the Illuminati? No, 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 not that. That's true, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, clip that, clip that. Um, no, 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 I'm just saying the, the, all the, all the um, child trafficking stuff and the things, the videos he claims to have and the things he's seen, whatever, and yet again, like... Everyone's pressing him to come forward with like yeah, a call little the cops. Right. Well, that's also like, a serious issue, right? Like, well, you, bro, it's a mad serious right. issue. And Ryan Garcia, the influencer boxer, has the answer. Influencer boxer, and yet, crazy. and yet, he's not come forward with any of them. He's got nothing to prove. No, he has the proof. That where he said it on Twitter. Exactly. Right, but I, I also yet, we're all pushing him. Like, yo, do good here. You have something that can stop this. You want to contribute to a very good cause in stopping child trafficking? Action, go. Stop just, stop just saying stuff and then talking about like how 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 it, it it's, you know, um, kind of backed by God, it, and not having actually any action to back up the things you're saying. I think is fucked up. Yeah, I don't know if it's like really strategically planned out in the sense where he's like sitting down at a table thinking I'm going to use the real issues of child trafficking and the no, and no, religion to promote me and my fight. Like, I don't think it's strategic in that sense, but indirectly, that's what, like maybe he is just experiencing some kind of like manic episode and did come across some maybe, Bohemian yeah. Grove videos. That, that, and he's that, like, that's definitely what it is. He, he's like, oh, he scrolled on TikTok a little a too long. And then woke up one day and was like, I'm going to do something about this and co started coming up with these lies. It worked and then it's compounded bro, into this bigger bro, thing. And it's definitely manic. Bro, I had to remind everyone that this dude came on my podcast and said the earth is flat. Ryan? Yes, dude. Like nah. this, ain't, this ain't your normal guy. He, How long he, ago? He is susceptible to conspiracy theories. He just is. Bro, you know what happened to me the other day? What? <laughs> I tried to buy tickets from some dude on the side of the street because we needed extra tickets for the game. Them shits weren't even real. You got got? I got got and he Bro, disappeared. That's crazy. That that is why you need one of my favorite ticketing platforms, GameTime.co. Y'all know we love GameTime. I'm actually looking at some tickets right now for the U.S. Open. Very excited for that. I took my mom before, but GameTime is the best platform to buy tickets because they have a 110 price match guarantee. You get to see the tickets on the screen of where you're sitting to make sure that they're good tickets. 
and they have the best prices available. Let me tell you something. And if you go to an event and for some reason get fired, they have a job loss guarantee as well. So if you're trying to have fun and your dick boss fires you, they will refund you your money. I want to get fired. Well, well, Jasper, you are fired. And Game Time has got you covered. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Concerts, games, sports. Concerts, games. Comedy shows. Comedy shows. They all have that. it all, brother. Let me tell you something about Game Time. I love it. And they have last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, all of that. And the lowest price guarantee, like I said, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find better deals elsewhere. And the Game Time ticket coverage, make sure your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So don't be like Jasper and get got on the side of a venue. Got me and disappeared. Go to GameTime.co or the GameTime app. First time users use code JAKE at the checkout. Yes, that is very true. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code JAKE, J-A-K-E, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code JAKE, J-A-K-E, for those of you Jake! who can't spell, for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. But I, I feel I feel bad for Ryan, man. I hope he gets the help he needs. Um, and I feel like at this point you just got to get higher because, <laughs> like, it's no way back. Wait, which way do you guys see this fight going? Well, Yo, he's just, gonna get floored, yeah, bro. Yeah, he's he's gonna. Devin get Haney's yeah. damn near unbeatable right now, bro. Yeah, he's looking very, bro. very, very. I nice. feel bad, bro. Yeah, but like, well, he can maybe have a career in music after this. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> play his newest track. It, this this might what? be this. It what? just might be like punching somebody while they're already down, like playing no, something he's, like uh, that. He's high as a <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, down is like. I mean, bro, he has like he has. He has millions of dollars and is probably getting paid like fifteen million dollars for this fight. Like Fair he enough. he is weaving what he sows. Is that is that the right? He is sowing. He's sowing what he he's reaps. Re reaping what reaping he reaping cocks. What he sows. He so, so what? All right. What's so funny? She should make more money. Uh, what's so funny? She should make more money. Uh, what's so funny? Nothing. You should make more money. Huh? What's so funny? This shit sound like French Montana's biggest hit. So Jake, Jake knows the lyrics. You should make more money. Huh? What's so funny? Nothing. You should make more money. Huh? What's so funny? Nothing. You should make more money. Huh? Right. This shit is I good. agree with the lyrics. <laughs> What's so funny? Huh? Yeah, he didn't you should lie. should make more money. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Shit's hard. You gotta play that for a homeless the only issue is that he's supposed to be training for the biggest fight of his life. Right. Well, that's what that's the DAZN people definitely purposely troll him because it goes right into this. He's like, we go to the studio three, four a.m. I, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Watch, and then it goes to this. Literally goes from this. You can make more money. Huh? And then listen to the voiceover. All the time, four times a day, and it's just like it's a We're lot training of all the time, four it's times a day. <laughs> All right, so he gets floored in this fight. Then what does it look like for him moving forward? He's just after all this. Go fight Dio or Shakur. De Devin Haney, seventh round stoppage, and then yeah. But but the thing is, at the end of the day, like Ryan is good enough to be at a certain skill level, and regardless, his name is going to be massive. So he can kind of go down the into the B bracket. I'm Start. not even thinking about boxing, yo. I'm concerned about his life. Yeah, yeah, that's you true. You know, like, it, what does a loss on a scale as big as the one he's currently on do to someone when you're already clearly not mentally well? Well, so that's the thing. Is like, and yeah, on on, it's speculation, but let's say yeah, he is experiencing some kind of manic episode, whether it's drug induced, whatever. But there's not only the loss, but then there's the you when when you're manic, there's inevitable down after that you can only ride so high for so long and then there's this big crash after so if that paired with the loss could yeah it could be fucking dangerous. i'm i'm like genuinely concerned about him yeah I, i'm not th i'm thinking beyond his boxing career like i i don't as it stands this version of ryan that is going around saying and doing wild shit 
not doing what he's supposed to be doing and training for this big fight is not a healthy version of Ryan. I don't want to see this version of Ryan continue on because it's it's going to be ugly. I'm telling you, it's going to be ugly. So I want, I want to share a little story about my manic episode. Uh, mine, <laughs> mine was, it was drug-induced. Um, this is a few years ago. And <laughs> this goes to show the importance of having people around you that will tell you like, dude, you're you're out of your fucking mind right now. I was genuinely seriously convinced. I was already, I went home because I had a problem with drugs. I went home to like get my life sorted out as a grown man, like had to go back home fucking with, with my parents. It was not good. Um, and I w entered this manic fucking stage in my life where I was convinced that I was Neo from the Matrix, seriously. And I thought like people on my phones were listening to me. So like I would bring my mother downstairs to tell her my plan to save the world. And I had to leave the phones upstairs because they're listening to me. Thank God I had my mom to look me in the eyes and say, you're ill, you need help. You're not Neo from the Matrix. You, <laughs> you need help. Thank God she was there to tell me that, right? Or else I'd probably still fucking think I was Neo from the <laughs> Matrix. Thank be in a black suit right now. And, that's crazy. Yeah, and, that's and, and crazy. That's where, like, in all seriousness, actually, I hope there is, if, if that's what this is, I really hope there's somebody in this corner that can do that for him. Because if not, it can be, yeah, it can be dangerous. Well, you guys know as do everyone in my camp knows like sometimes it's hard to tell like the guy mm -hmm. yo you're out of your mind right yeah. now nah, you know we'll tell this you guys would and it, well too. you've also reached that level of comfortability with him but i don't we don't know the people around ryan are they new hires like are they friends nah, are they, bro I've known they work for, for years and the people around him for years and the problem is they like heavily rely on him he's not just like a leader and he's building like a great empire like they rely on him in so many ways like so to tell that person yeah you're being an idiot is not an easy conversation no, like, yo, I'm, and then absolutely. i'm being an idiot bro i'm ryan garcia i'm a fucking great boxer i got money like it's yeah there, there's just also the important thing to remember which is that we have no actual idea what's completely going on behind the scenes like who knows who knows if, been who knows before, if there bro. is somebody trying to speak up to him and he's like Telling him to fuck off and because that you know, happens like, as well. Yeah, right. You know? And then in that situation, I mean, it's like, all right, dude, I tried on to Instagram live bugging the fuck out, and he has people around him in the it, when he has people around him in the same house, and he's on Instagram live bugging the fuck out. No one's saying anything. When you used to get fucking drunk out of your mind, did I not just take your phone from you? Yeah, and then just carried me home. I'll just take take his phone <laughs> and carry my dog home. I'm, I'm not about to have him texting nobody, going live doing no dumb shit like there's nobody around him like they hear what he's saying on live because a lot of these things are on oh fuck there's actually there's there's something there's a name for this i think it's called like the fucking pilot syndrome or something the something but it's basically like when there is a leader in a group right a lot of the people that aren't the leader in that group take whatever the leader says for the gold standard and oftentimes the leader can be fucking wrong and they need somebody below them to let them know like, hey, dude, you're wrong here. This is a better idea or you should do this instead. But a lot of time people always, in, when, when they aren't in that leader ranking, will always take whatever it is that the leader's saying as, like I said, the gold standard. And like it causes this, there's, there's a fucking name no, for it. it. I, I, like, I like what you're describing. There has to be a, like a phenomenon for yeah, this because yeah. it makes I, total fucking sense. And oh. we have Bo Penny. <clears throat> Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel on to join us today for BS. We have him joining us in studio. We have him in our grasp. <laughs> that's, that's one way to put it. We, we, have, we have Bo in our grasp. Thanks, Bo, for... We have Bo in a rear naked choke. <laughs> Bo has never been submitted until now when he joins us on Bullshit with Jake and, well, Logan Paul is here, too. <laughs> Bullshit with Jake and Logan Paul, um, actually, and we have and we have Bo Bo we have Bo five pennies. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, in actually, a rear naked choke, hey, joining hey, us hey, live hey. in the studio. Editor, edit him in. Bo, congrats, bro, on the performance. I know you were mad at yourself, but I thought you did a great job, man. Thanks, bro. Yeah, it's uh, kind of funny, you know. I think um, in that moment, obviously, right after the fight, there were some things that I wanted to do better and things I felt like, uh, you know, I wish I would have done or this and that, but, um, a few days removed, you know, I think that, uh, and having looked back and watched the fight, I feel better about it. And at the end of the day, it's only, you know, good things, only learning experiences for me. So, um, I feel happy about it and I'm excited to get back in there. Yeah. I think it's tough. Like 
a couple of things. One, I think you're held to such a higher standard because of your wrestling background. And I've experienced the same thing where they like expect you to be at the complete highest level. And if you're not, then they're, then they're pissed off. Um, so there's that. And I think you're held to that same standard, which is also good. It's a good thing. And I'm sure it's pushed you to, to be better, but I didn't think he was like trying to fight you. So when the guy's in there like running and like just not really wanting to engage and kind of being like a fish and just trying to survive. I think it makes it very difficult. Yeah. You know, I think after that, like initial flurry that his idea is probably just survive as long as he can. So, you know, of course, like he's a professional fighter, a guy that, um, you know, trains full time to, uh, do that. So it's not going to be like just, you know, what most people would expect. Um, kind of, as you were saying, right. They think that since I've set such high expectations, you know, you just, knock the dude out cold or throw him down and choke him out in 30 seconds and it's like well this is like a full-grown man as well and i think people forget that you know who who trains full-time and this guy does strength conditioning all that stuff so yeah i mean I, I look back at my performance obviously it's i can be critical of myself in some ways but at the same time i think that i did do a few things well so i feel uh again a little further removed i have a better um i think uh view on it well i think you're the one setting the expectations you know, like when people watch you, at least when I watch you, I'm I'm like, yo, this is a guy who is just a dominant fighter. When you signed with Better, I was texting Download Jake, Better, best download, fantasy sports app in the better. world. I was texting Jake. I was like, bro, that's a great signing. Like, Bo, just an up and coming, like just dominant, dominant fighter. And I, I could feel you were going to be disappointed in yourself after you didn't get the guy out in the first round because – Correct me if I'm wrong, right? You've you've eliminated everyone, and no one's made it out of the first round <laughs> except this guy who made it to like minute one or two of the second round. Good for him, whatever. And I could see you were a little disappointed. Um, and just to play devil's advocate for a second, like because uh, I know how the fighter brain works, and you know you've been crushing it. When you saw the rest of the fights on UFC 300, and 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 some of them right were like electric, some of the best moments we've seen like in UFC history. Was that? Was that motivating for you or did you beat yourself up more because you felt like you couldn't or your performance didn't match up with the rest of the card? Well, I think like you said at the beginning, um, it's more so me putting the pressure on myself and feeling like, you know, I, I want to perform a certain way. And honestly, I wasn't really mad that the fight went longer because that's, you know, good for me to get into the second round and experience a little more, um, just a little more time in the cage. And so I feel like what I was really more critical of was, uh, the sloppiness, I felt a little sloppy and, and Jake, you made a good point. It's tough to fight a guy that's like just trying to survive in there. So I try to like give myself a little grace in that regard, but I do think, um, there was a couple of things that factored in just like lack of experience on my part and also not having fought in nine months, you know, it's a, a longer layoff longer than what I'm used to. So I think that the, uh, the back to an, your original point, Logan, the intensity of the moment and the fights on the rest of the card, it's definitely like something that I think played into it. And, uh, you know, it's a big opportunity for me. So I got, I want to go out there and like, just absolutely kill it. And I felt like I did what I needed to do to win, but that's not my standard. Like my standard isn't just get it done. My standard is dominate. And, uh, so that's why, why I was a little frustrated, but I mean, the rest of the card was amazing and I was happy for those guys. I, it, it, I've always felt like I want everybody around me to do well and do better. And I just want to do even better. So that's like, I, I want people to like put on amazing performances and then, you know, hopefully I can go show out even more. So that, that's all, I, my mindset. I'm, I'm happy to be part of that card. Even if my fight wasn't the highlight of the night. What did, what did Zuck say to you after the fight? Zuck was just like awesome fight, man. Like he was pumped. Um, it was kind of cool. He, uh, he and I came into the arena at the same time, so I had never met him before, so we got to meet and say hello and stuff. And then obviously he was right next to Dana, so went over to Dana and Hunter afterwards and just uh, was saying what's up to all those guys. Is you know just crazy stuff at the UFC fights. There's always mad people around. What's it like to to interact with one of the first AI humanoids in, released to the public? Yeah, does he does he have lizard skin like? <laughs> He seemed mad normal, man. Like, it's pretty crazy. A guy, like, obviously, pretty much everybody in the world knows him and everybody uses Facebook and stuff. And I didn't honestly have, like, a long interaction with him or anything like that. But I just initially said, yo, what's up, man? Like, nice to meet you. And he was, like, pretty cool. Nice to meet you. But I would say the biggest thing was I could tell that that dude for real loves fighting. Like, he is so into it, you know, just as much as 
any diehard like hardcore fan, um, which is crazy to me. A guy that's multi-billionaire genius like loves the most primal sport there is. So I thought that was cool. Well, they must have wrote that into his code. It, was there any <laughs> was there any sparking or glitching right. when you were talking to him? <laughs> <laughs> no glitching, no glitching. But uh, yeah, Yo, I mean, I, I, have, I, I, I feel have to, again. I have to play devil's advocate. There's a video going around of Mark Zuckerberg swearing, mm. and his style has improved. He had that cool T-shirt on. This might be one of the first outings that we've seen where Mark proves himself to not be. It. No, well, no, I no, do no, actually that, cuss no. a little. No, that, <laughs> <laughs> Probably sure fuck. Says, bro, that <laughs> is a robot. <laughs> not for sure. That, he looked. He looked. Way less robotic. I think time. he needs to like have a couple of drinks and like let the like or yeah. the or shake the robot out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so Bo, what, do you think you will uh, ever fight with Kamshat? I mean, <clears throat> Kamzat Shemaev. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. That's the plan, man. Yeah, for sure. Like, I want that fight so bad. Um, you know, I think that we're we're at a little different points in our career. You know, he's had quite a bit more fights than me, and. Uh, it's interesting because people are critical of me, you know, fighting where I'm fighting and stuff like that um, or saying, you know, I'm fighting bums and I'm like, yo, go look at who these dudes were fighting at 5-0. and Like they're fighting some random ass dude that's like never even fought. And like, what are we talking about? I'm fighting a guy that's had eight fights in the UFC. But uh, yeah, anyways, back to your question. That fight's happening 100%. I, my hope, and I have nothing, no control over this, but my hope is that he just keeps winning because it's better for uh, us both, you know, like... If it can be for the belt or, you know, just be like one of the most um, hype fights of all time, then I would absolutely, you know, love that. And obviously I'm going to keep winning, keep doing my thing. But really what I'm most nervous about is if he keeps winning because I don't think he's really dedicated the way I am. I don't think he really loves the sport the way I do. So, you know, we'll see. I, regardless, the matchup will happen. I just hope we're both undefeated at the time. Bo, after the fight, you addressed the crowd and said that in time they're all going to turn and end up liking you. Do you feel pressure to turn them and, and make them like you? Or do you, do you, do you ever consider taking the, the Paul route where you just hold up the middle finger and say, fuck you guys? Or? Yeah, and call people cum shot. <laughs> My fiance liked it when you said that. She thought it was very nice. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it was like a little bit of low-key trolling just because like, I'm like, yo, why are y'all booing me? Like, that's crazy. But uh, um, I feel like, I do feel like just from my experience that the people that don't know me as well, who boo me, who you know are upset about what I, you know, where I'm at on the card or my style for whatever reason, like I do genuinely believe that those people will come around. Um, just from my experience, you know, I think that having wrestled in college, obviously there's fan bases built into every school. You know, there's Penn State fans, there's Iowa fans, Oklahoma State. So a regular weekend for me was going to Iowa or, or Ohio State or whatever and getting booed by 15,000 people. So. The booze don't really bother me, but I did feel like by the end of my wrestling career, everybody respected me and even liked me um, just because of the way I competed. And so I think most of the fans just need to get to know me better. And the more I fight and the more I uh, am out there, the more they'll get to know me. And I'm going to put on crazy performances and do things that they've never seen. So, you know, with that will come at least respect, if not, you know, some appreciation. You know, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, I think the fact that you're humble and soft-spoken actually works against you in that regard. I feel like when when people are used to and liking a Nate Diaz type character, when someone comes along like you, who's a bit more soft-spoken and kind of humble about himself, there's there's almost something about it that people don't like. I think that in a way works against you. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I I think that just coming from wrestling, right? Like nobody talks trash. It's not like a flashy sport it's not in your face um it's it's interesting because if you ask the wrestling community i'm like one of the most talkative guys and uh <laughs> you you then go to mma and it's like i'm i'm the opposite end of the spectrum so i think it has to do with with a little bit with the sports and where they're at and you know for me um i think i'm fortunate that i don't have to um like people want to watch me and maybe more people would want to watch me if I talk crazier, but I, I have that wrestling fan base and that strong following of it's no, it's not massive, but they're all very loyal. So that's something that, uh, I feel like just adds to, um, my, I guess, uh, the, what, me not having to, you know, really like sell fights as much. And, you know, maybe, maybe as, as I get bigger then. You know, there's going to be more selling fights and more more talking, but nobody's really talked trash or really said anything that negative to me, like as far as my opponents or stuff like that. 
but uh you know we'll, we'll see how it goes in the future but yeah fire i fucks with it cool we gotta we gotta get rid of that don't do that again don't don't say never fucks again. with it never never i again. didn't say that <laughs> right. cool bro well i fucks with that interview <laughs> and uh <laughs> Well, actually, here it's wait, been a wait, while. Wait, wait. You can you can cut the cameras, Bo. They 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 just cut. Hey, he's a he's a fucking robot, right? <laughs> We're off not record, record. dude. Off record. The, the dude, the dude. We didn't again, like we didn't really chat it up for a, a, that long, so it was robots it's hard can't for me to tell, program but. that much info at once. Did he have They're a lot just of still early stages? They say robots. Yo, if, if anything, he's mad. He's advanced. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Logan, thank you, Bo. I want to say to you, though, uh, congratulations on uh, um, the pregnancy and stuff. That's awesome. I'm, I'm you, happy Bo. for you, man. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you, man. Very excited. Appreciate you. Better Picks is now offering 1,000 times payouts. I don't even know what to say anymore. This is an absurd number that will be coming directly out of my pockets. Uh, it's very simple to play. You literally just pick your favorite players, watching them like you normally would, with a chance to win 1,000 times your money. $1 into 1,000. Five dollars into five thousand, and so on. It's absurd. I don't know who came up with this, but download better and play better picks to win one thousand times your cash. And uh, hopefully, you don't bankrupt us because I need to get back to rob you. Then we wouldn't have enough money to produce this show. Oh, please rob him then. Jasper doesn't want to do the show. Please, please. <laughs> he is forced to be here. Speaking of the UFC, you ha you do have some bum ass jamokes, uh, just nonstop talking Ugh. about you still to this day after you beat the shit out of one of them, and one of them can't even fight you legally. The one thing I will say, they're they're digging their own grave. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but I'm being so serious when I say that I want to fight them in MMA, either Masvidal or Diaz in the PFL ten million dollar offer for either one of those guys and again they will literally be hide behind the fact Masvidal you can't even box you what the fuck are you gonna do coming over to MMA bro I'm fucking from Miami Florida bro fucking fuck you dude don't disrespect me you fucking Jim why not just take fucking bird, bird brain that's like what he hides behind and same with fucking Patty and Sean Strickland. All of these guys like hide behind these crazy things, but still none of them have shown up to the table to talk any business about anything to make anything actually happen in a real fight, a real spar, whatever it is. So the offer still stands there. I want one, either one of those guys in MMA. Sean Strickland didn't want to spar you? No. For a million. For a million dollars. Set, a offered million. to send him the PJ. No way. Yep. And he said the UFC wouldn't allow him to do it, but he just sparred Sneeko, who is an influence. Yeah, but you don't, if, if, bro, yeah. if you work Strickland, it's not a good look for the UFC. Of course, that's why they don't want Masvidal to box me. That's why Masvidal is allowed to box. The UFC gave Masvidal a list of 35 names that he was allowed to box. He's technically still under UFC contract, so they're letting him out of his contract to box Nate, but there was 35 other names, and I was not on it. Was he I said, on it? Yes, you were. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Take him out, brother. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That's yep. fucked up. People already confuse us. Why don't you just pretend to be me, and I'll pretend to be that's you? That's a good that's idea. Smart. That's a good idea. Little makeup over the tattoos. 100%. An inflatable muscle outfit. Yeah, I need, I'm need. i pretty <laughs> fat. <laughs> oh, no. You're just, huh? a heavyweight. You're just a heavyweight now. So, so yeah, that could work. We could get, I could get behind that. But yeah, it's it's fricked up, man. But let's say let's say one of them were to take you up on that. What's the realistic timeline as to when a MMA fight for you could actually happen? Well, obviously I have Mike, but I would just do it after that. You gotta learn some jujitsu, brother. Yeah, I would do like six a six month camp. You gotta learn some kicks, my man. Yeah, that's a crazy transition. Yeah. Yeah, hunching and kicking. Speaking of transitions, yeah, we'll go. I mean, we, we don't have to transition. We can just talk about the fucking Max that, Holloway that, that, having yeah, the craziest performance. That is, what I, was, I, that I, is that was good. I took that, the opportunity. That, that is what I did want to talk about. <laughs> Let's see, UFC yeah. 300, this, WrestleMania, this three, Haney, Drake, Drake knocks out Jamal Metro Hill. Boomin, Conor McGregor, Conor Chandler, predictions. Here's a three or four. Yeah, my bad. Predictions for is is Conor making his comeback? Rick Ross and BBLs. No, I didn't see this. Is Conor making his comeback? Yeah, well, Michael Chandler. I didn't see this either. Like, like actually, 
It's so wild. Like, I didn't. I don't know if it made that. It didn't make much noise, right? It kind of. How do we hundred? I don't know about this. It was. It was a yeah, soft announcement for Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor. Yeah, D Dana White said it very subtly in like he, a, bro. He like read it in a letter. Yeah. I, I actually like that. It was an interesting way to like announce it. Yeah, because I feel like they've been announcing his return for like years now. So is an actor now. It's kind of like let's let's uh man get him on the mic. He'll take care of it. See when it. He'll take care of yeah, it. Yeah, right. I don't actually, you have to worry about promoting a. a Kind of yeah, McGregor fight. Right? Would you seriously do a UFC fight? Like, I would. What are the What are the chances that we see that? I would. Do, I would totally do a UFC fight. Um, the chances that you see that, bro. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Like, what are the What are the chances that we see you fight Mike Tyson? You know, like a year ago. A hundred percent. Yeah, but a year ago it was like zero, and then all of a yeah. sudden it's happening. Like yeah. actually. Yeah. True. So I don't know. True. The, the important thing for me is whoever I would fight in the UFC needs to inspire me to actually beat them up. Would uh, I think you could fuck up Patty Pimblet in MMA? Yeah. He's trash. He's Is he trash? He's, he's not trash. He's not He's trash. terrible. I don't think he's trash. He's he, terrible. His striking is not great. He lost his last fight, got a pass from the judges. He did lose his that and loss, yeah. But dude like I don't know like fighting Patty I feel like he's a guy that I would beat and then people would just Make fun of me because he's like two weight classes lower than me, and I would fight Fat Patty, obviously, like my weight class Patty. But then he just looks like a blimp. Yeah, but bro, it's your fucking of. first year, first MMA fight. But people I don't, don't understand, bro. If, if there's like, if there's an in to discredit anything we do, like if we're not buttoned up, there's gonna be people saying, yeah, shit. But yeah, that's you why. Can, the, but you can that's hide why behind people, that forever. You can hide behind that. People forever. are already discrediting yeah, this whole entire fight with Mike Tyson, like basically saying if I win, it doesn't mean anything, and that's fine. Whatever they want to think. I, I, I don't know if I, like, I don't, I actually find Patty entertaining. So, like, and I don't dislike him. I don't, I'm, like, I think a bit beyond these, like, random, like, beefs at the moment. I have a job and a fucking pregnant fiance, bro. Like, I'm chilling. So, unless I, like, really want to beat someone up, which I just really don't at the moment, I'm not going to. It sounds like the perfect time to me, though. You got a nine-month a nine window to just beef. It's not nine months anymore. Oh. We, we're like halfway through, bro. God damn. Yeah, we announced late. Was it hard to, to keep it a secret for a while? Super, super hard. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we need to pivot. Pivot. Uh, um, speaking of fighting, um, when does your camp officially start? Yeah, what, what's going on? <laughs> I feel like you're fighting Mike Tyson me, in four me. months. Me? Yeah, yeah. I think it's him, right? Him? Yeah, so. yeah you. Um, like, start, like starting to work out to, to fight Michael. Yeah, all, all, all that good old stuff. I'm, see, well, I'm I'm fat, so I don't even understand the dynamic. But just all that, whatever right. that entails, yeah, right, yeah. I should probably start. I, f I feel like maybe, like, yeah, you should. You, th you think I should start? I do think so. I think you should start like yesterday. I think so. I did see him boxing in the gym yesterday. I'll be honest with you. I saw him shadow boxing, and he looked much yeah, faster. Yeah, Mike's than not I. a shadow, though, brother. Yeah, Mike's not a shadow. What What were you saying? That I look much faster than just much faster than I expected. Much faster than I expected. So, I really appreciate everyone joining today, Thank and we're Thanks. gonna close out Thank with our outro song. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. What's so funny? Huh? Come on, looking at Jake with a disgusted uh, face right now. She has complaints uh, about the episode. What's so funny? Nothing. Uh, she is not you happy. You should make more money. Uh, uh,